bullshit explanations, unnecessary lengths of treatments, treatment plans that lock people into a year of treatments, often being snake oil salesmen of the healthcare industry. Now, before you click off, livid at the fact that I've just had a go at Kairos and said those things, wait till the end of the video because you're also going to hear why I love Kairos and what I love about chiropractic adjustment. But let's get back to what annoys me. So the first thing that really frustrates me about some bad chiropractic treatment is the use of imaging to lock people into long 12 months to two, three times a week sales packages. Chiros will often do an, an x-ray of a patient. They'll look at their spine. They'll say, oh, look at this. This is out of alignment. We know that alignment isn't actually massively correlated to pain. And they'll say, oh yeah, you've got these issues there. They'll look at these, they'll do like a posture and analysis and say, look, look at all these issues you've got. Um, look how broken you are. And now I'm gonna sell you a 12 month package doing two to three times a week, costing thousands of pounds and locking that patient in for those treatments. I think this is salesman -y. I think it's snake oily. I don't like it at all. I think ultimately you should be about providing the care that the patient needs until they are better. And as soon as they're better, giving them the tools that they need in order to stay pain-free and give them the tools that they need in order to feel robust, to feel strong, to not feel in pain and to move forwards in their life and not feel constantly at the beck and call of a Cairo. A second big thing is this obsession with Cairo's, bad Cairo's, telling patients that their alignment is what's causing their pain. Your pelvis is out of alignment, this is why you've got back pain. You've got one leg shorter than the other, this is why you've got back pain. A lot of these myths and misconceptions have been completely debunked time and time again. We know that a lot of manipulation doesn't change spinal positions. There's studies that have been done on that looking at do the spinal positions actually change pre and post manipulation? They don't. We know that you can't actually physically localize to a joint. So often when you're manipulating, thinking you're manipulating one thing, you're manipulating other things, or other joints are cavitating and moving. Does it reduce pain? Yes. Does it often look like patients might be posturally better after manipulation? Yeah, sometimes it does because it meet, makes people relax. There's a neurophysiological effect which affects the brain and helps the, the tissues in that area feel less painful. So it's not that these things are not helpful, but it's the explanation that's really important. If you or a patient feels they are out of alignment and the only way they can fix themselves is going to a Cairo, they're gonna be worried every time they feel out of alignment. And actually, we know that we can teach people tools to, to rehabilitate themselves, to work on themselves in a way that then they don't have these, these fears, anxieties, and these fears and anxieties will often make recovery worse. Third thing I hate is people being told they need top-up treatment. Oh yeah, just come in once a month, come in twice a month, and you can you know make sure that you, your body feels good. What this does is it puts an emphasis on passive treatments. Passive treatments being something that someone else does to you. You get in the mindset in a, as a patient that you need to be fixed. You need someone else to do something to you. You're losing what's called your locus of control. You're feeling that you are in control of your body, that you are in control of your pain. And we know that this has a negative impact on recovery and on treatment times and in, in terms of getting better. What patients need to do is be given the tools and the strategies to get better longer term using themselves, using their own knowledge, using their understanding of pain and what things will influence that pain, which are multifactorial. It's not just about alignment and it's more about understanding that so that you can put strategies in place to fix that. Language in rehabilitation is everything. And if you tell someone someone needs to top up every month, they're gonna feel like there's something inherently wrong with their body that means that they cannot ever be out of pain unless they have this treatment every month, which is simply not the case. And the fourth thing I hate about chiros or chiropractic adjustment and chiros in general is that they, some of the bad ones will either choose to ignore the evidence or just won't read the evidence. So they won't read studies that go against their biases and they will be stuck in these long-term myths and misconceptions about pain. And what this means is they're probably stuck in this cycle of being in pain, going to see the Cairo, they feel a bit better, they go back and see the Cairo, they get worse again, back and forth. And often in the NHS, I see patients who have gone through this cycle time and time again, and then they, they come to you 
and they have a whole host of different issues around pain. We know that pain is multifactorial, as I've said. I've done a complete video, which I'll link uh, up here and in the description, about the multifactorial nature of pain, what causes pain, are the multiple things that cause it, and how you can have an impact on that. So if you wanna check that out, do so. But pain is, is something that is very complicated. It's not just about alignment. Knowing that stress can, help, can cause pain, that um, your sleep, your social um, lives, your, your psychology around pain, so how you think about pain, your feelings and your cognition, so what you think, how you feel, all these things will affect pain. So I'm a hater, right? I, I hate Kairos, but hang on a sec, I've done a video on why I love Kairos. So if you wanna check that out, then click here.